With a name as long running as the Mustang, sooner or later you're bound to have a couple of specialty trims come out throughout the years, which is why I'm back out here at Mount Hood, just outside of Portland, Oregon, with the rest of the members of the Automotive Video Association to test out our best performance cars and best performance SUVs. And the vehicle parked right next to me, this is the all new 2019 Mustang Bullet, a new Mustang that's designed to be a throwback to the original Mustang that Steve McQueen drove in the movie Bullet all the way back in 1960. But I know the big question I'm asking, is this new bullet trim a worthy upgrade over a GT with the Performance Package 1? That's what we're here to find out. By now, you guys should be pretty familiar with this generation Mustang. It's been out since 2015, and Ford gave it a significant overhaul uh, for 2018. For 2019, they've brought back the Bullet. Now, this vehicle doesn't really need an introduction because it's been around, the name has been around for 50 years. That's the reason why Ford has brought it back. And compared to the regular GT Mustang, the Bullet gets its own unique styling elements. Of course, with all other Mustangs, you have full LED headlights, which are standard LED low and high beams, LED running lights, and then an LED turn signal down here in the lower part of the fascia. Now, the one thing that you're, distinguishes the bullet from other GTs is this unique grille. Unlike other Mustangs, the running horse is gone. Instead, they've replaced it with this kind of black mesh finish that is echoed throughout the lower portion here, and then you have this chrome strip. And then the bullet kind of comes with the performance package uh, as standard, so you have a unique front splitter where it's kind of a, a low gloss paint uh, on this portion as opposed to the, high, the bright gloss. Overall, I think it's a definitely very distinguishable as a Mustang, um, but what Ford has done with the bullet trim, as they always have, is they've kind of made it a little bit more discreet. You can't really tell this is the performance model. Now, all Mustangs got a new head hood for 2018, where these uh, extraction vents are functional to help cool the engine, and the vehicle also looks pretty good when you look at the side profile. Now, like just like the original bullet car, uh, from the movie, you do have your its own unique set of wheels. These are the heritage uh, black finished five spoke wheels with kind of the machine bright finish on the outer lip. And then the bullet also gets upgraded Brembo brakes from the track package along with the red painted calipers. That's the only way you're gonna get that on the bullet to get the red calipers. Now the Mustang is definitely not a small car. Its wheelbase is still 107 inches long. It's 188 and a half inches long. This is right around the size of like a mid-size sedan, maybe slightly smaller, but this is not a compact car and you're not, and you're definitely gonna notice that uh, when you're behind the wheel of the vehicle. Now, just like the original car as well, they've kind of made it even more subtle at the back. The spoiler is gone. You can't even get a spoiler on the bullet. They've also replaced the GT badge over here in addition to getting rid of the 5.0 badge on the sides. Um, it's all meant to make this vehicle look a little bit more discreet. That's the whole purpose of the bullet. You're not supposed to know this is the high performance car until you start up the engine and listen to that exhaust. And the bullet also comes standard with the GT Active Exhaust, which is like $800. It sounds incredible. It's one of the best sounding uh, American muscle car V8s you can get. You have standard full LED taillights with that sequential turn signal that you all know with Mustangs. And I definitely think that the bullet looks good in the signature dark Highland green. If you don't like green, you can also get black, but those are the only two colors you can get. I'm just not so sure that the styling differences, the whole discrete factor are for me. I like the shoutiness of the GT with the wing spoiler, but again, you bought the bullet because you wanted it to show your heritage to the movie and you want something that's a little bit more discreet. Looking at the trunk capacity of the Mustang, a lot of people still use this as their only vehicle, so you need to have a pretty usable trunk. It still measures 13 and a half 
cubic feet, so that hasn't changed. The seats themselves, they do fold down 60-40. And then if you look underneath the floor here, no spare tire. Instead, Ford just gives you uh, an air compressor and a fix-a-flat kit. Moving on to the inside of the Mustang Bullet, I want to first show you guys the key fob. It does come with Ford's Smart Key Access System with push button start. No remote start though because the Bullet is only a manual. This key fob I've shown you before, it's the typical larger, uh, kind of a little bit heavier Ford key, but it's not bad. So if you keep this key fob in your pocket, just like every other vehicle, just touch this little area here on the door handles that locks the door. And then Ford does a sensor on the back of the handle, so just touch that and it'll unlock the door for you. Now looking at the the rest of this interior, you can see this particular one that I'm showing you has the Recaro seats. They're a $1,500 uh, option for the Recaro seats. And just like the exterior, the Bullet's uh, interior has slight tweaks here and there. The steering wheel, of course, being the first obvious one. You also have green stitching here on the actual seats. Black interior is your only option. I probably would skip the Recaro seats and just go for the standard seats because you do lose the power seats with memory, which is available and the heated and cooled function. So unless you guys plan to track the vehicle all the time, I wouldn't get the Recaro seats, although they do hold you in place nicely. I just don't like the way that they're manual and you lose a lot of the features. Now, getting into the interior, you can see it's definitely low, but you're probably noticing that the interior of the Bullet still has the typical Mustang qualities in here. When you shut the door, it's kind of heavy. Uh, and it doesn't sound super uh, solid when it shuts, but uh, a lot of these vehicles in the segment don't always sound that way. Now, starting the vehicle up, uh, push button start, as I said, which is included. All you have to do is put your foot on the, or put the clutch in, push this button here to fire up the engine. <laughs> and I do like the way that engine sounds. It's definitely a nice mean sounding engine. Let me move over to the sport setting that opens up the exhaust. God, that V8. Love that sound of that naturally aspirated V8. You can't really complain with that. But anyways, as you guys saw, the Bullet does come standard with the 12-inch configurable display. This display changes the tack and the look of everything uh, based on you know what drive mode you're in, or you can also set it to just be in a specific drive mode if you guys would like that to do so. It also has this really nice green accents to it. So again, the green's kind of carrying through with the rest of this interior. Uh, on the upper dashboard here, you can see there's some green stitching. It's soft touch right here. It's a faux stitching. My tester has the electronics package for 2000 bucks that gives you the Bang & Olufsen audio system. You have this aluminum trim here with the performance pack gauges here, which show you the oil pressure and vacuum pressure inside the cylinders. Uh, the door panels here you can see is actually soft touch. That's included as part of the 401A upgrade package that this tester, that the Bullet gives you. It's nice and leather padded right here. No memory seats, as I said, because this one has the Recaro option. The windows are one touch express for both windows, which is definitely nice. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes. It feels nice in your hands. A little bit big rim. I wish it was a little bit smaller with a flat bottom, but maybe Ford will shave, save that for the uh, Shelby version of this vehicle. Um, I do like the some of the switch gearing here. Feels typical uh, Ford. It all feels really nice and high quality. Now here is the Sync 3 infotainment system. Um, it's an 8-inch touchscreen. When you put the vehicle into reverse here, you can see it gives you a backup camera. It gives you trajectory. Uh, it also has um, no parking sensors in this particular one. Uh, however, it is available on other Mustangs as part of the security package. Speaking of which, there are no driver assistance available on the Bullet, just blind spot monitoring under cross traffic alert and a backup camera. The other Mustang GT will offer um, the full speed range adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist and automatic braking. Mustang Bullets, however, don't offer that. You can see here, I'm not gonna go too much in debt with the infotainment system. This is the typical Ford Sync 3. It does include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see here's the navigation function. Ford really uh, made a lot of updates to you know their infotainment system. I will say that they need to work on the screen clarity. It's a little bit coarse and grainy. Um, it just doesn't look as high quality and as nicely modern as some of the newer competition. So I believe Ford is working on a new update of that. I've showed you guys something similar in the new Lincoln Navigator. And over here, this these buttons would typically be for your um, heated and cooled seats, but because you can see with your cars, you don't get that. Lots of you know nice knobs and switches here for your climate controls. You have dual zone automatic. This controls your drive mode selector, where you can cycle between track, drag strip, snow, wet, normal. My mode is where you can basically do an individual setting. Uh, and you can access the line lock and the um, launch control from the actual mode here by using this button here. Push this, you can change a lot of customization with this vehicle, your rev match, active rev match, which is new for 2018 for the manual transmission models. You can also put the exhaust into like a quiet mode at startup if you don't wanna piss off your neighbors. It's all really nice. So Ford's really up the technology in this vehicle. And I also like with the bullet, you get a special unique placard here that shows what number your bullet is. Although that number 15, this one's the 15th produced, I'm guessing, doesn't actually echo into the VIN number of this vehicle. Now, just like the original bullet, you have a cue ball shifter here with the white knob. 
It's a six-speed manual, which uh, the throws feel a little bit longer to me, and I didn't really like the way reverse is or felt. When I was rushing the vehicle, driving it, I found that reverse isn't fully like just straight up. You kind of have to move slightly to the right. The shifter doesn't like being hurried, so we'll go over that into the test drive later on. No wireless charging in this vehicle, but you do have a USB port there. A little bit more storage. Cup holders here. It's slightly padded actually right here, which is nice. This is part of the Bullet's interior upgrade. Usually this is a cheap hard plastic. Uh, and then over here, it's nice and padded leather. And then there's a nice little storage area with another USB, um, which is great. Uh, the glove compartment is not lined with felt, but it is damp. It's a good size. No sunroof is available on any Mustang. Uh, the seats, as I said before, hug you in place really well. Just be sure that you actually do plan to track the car because you will lose a lot of features. Overall, I do like the interior of the Bullet. I like the updates with the green and the um, you know the unique elements of this vehicle over the exterior, um, but it's still the typical Mustang interior. It feels relatively spacious, but visibility uh, is a little bit constricted, but it is the best out of all the muscle cars. Now, occasionally you may want to use the back seat in your Mustang, because remember, this is supposed to be a four-seater. So to get back here, let me show you how to do that really quick. Now, first of all, my tester has the Recaro seats, as I said earlier, and I think I may actually prefer the standard seats because these are only manual. And when I pull this lever, the seat moves forward, but it doesn't actually automatically slide. There's also a lever back here and it doesn't slide forward. So that's kind of a pain in the ass. You have to use the manual lever here and then slide this seat forward. There's no actual automatic function, which there should be. But getting back here, I'll do that to entertain you guys really quick. It's pretty tight. Now I'm five foot seven and my head is touching the roof. Um, and I don't even want to put the seat back because there's like no leg room down here, uh, <laughs> which is pretty typical of this class. The Camaro is not any better. The Challenger is the only one that kind of gives you more usable space. There's no armrest here and the seat feels a little bit narrow. So if you're a little bit fatter, you're not going to fit very well back here. Um, so I suggest only putting people you don't like or small children in the back. Now, materials are all hard touch plastic on the door panels. It's all very cheap hard touch plastic. So I see a little cost cutting here in the rear seat, but again, most people are probably won't be putting st uh, people in here, but you could uh, put your stuff down, put, put your stuff in here or fold the rear seats down. So underneath the Mustang's long and slightly heavy hood, the Bullet only comes with one engine choice, and this is the engine that you're gonna want in this vehicle. It's the company's tried and true five liter Coyote V8. It's a double overhead cam, direct injection V8. Ford's been using this engine for quite a long time, actually, since 2011, but they've made steady improvements throughout, to it throughout the years. 2018 is when it got a big refresh. Now, the standard GTs, they make 460 horsepower. The Bullet, however, it gets a slightly unique tune, so it breathes better. It also has a new uh, intake manifold, um, which is actually similar to the one that you find in the Shelby. Because of that, it gets another 20 horsepower. So you're looking at 480 horsepower from a five liter naturally aspirated V8 that revs to 7,500 RPM. So those are the makings of for some nice um, stats for an enthusiast. Now torque, it's a little bit softer because it's naturally aspirated at 420 pound feet. All, all bullets only come with a six speed manual transmission. It's slightly unique to the bullet with a slightly revised gear ratios. All Mustangs are rear wheel drive and fuel economy actually remains the same at 15 in the city, 25 on the highway. Please put premium gas in this thing. It's relatively heavy, about 150 pounds heavier than the standard GT. So this one weighs around 3,900 pounds. Despite that, Ford says it'll get to 60 in like 4.4 seconds. It'll top out at just under 190 miles an hour. Let's get it on the road and see how it performs. So the last Mustang that I drove was actually earlier this year. It was the 10 speed automatic GT without the track package, without the performance package. Now we're in the bullet with the six speed manual. This is definitely the transmission I want in a Mustang. And first setting off here, the exhaust is glorious sounding. I love that naturally aspirated V8. It just sounds great. And for the longest time, Chevy was really outdoing, Chevy and Dodge was really outdoing Ford in terms of engine sound. And, and Ford has really, really rectified it. So I'm super happy about that. But let's actually, turn off the traction control here. I wanna try a quick little launch. Now, for some reason, the car keeps telling me launch control unavailable, so we'll try our best to do it without it. That was weak. Oh, that's glorious sounding. <laughs> Bounced off the limiter there. Wow, this, this engine revs up so fast that you really have to watch the, uh, watch the tack because this, <laughs> this car will bounce off at 7,500 RPM red line pretty quick. But God, this thing is quick. This thing feels and sounds so good. You can't beat a naturally aspirated V8 for that reason. Listen to that, wow. <laughs> wow, but I'm gonna slow down here again. I wanna try one more launch. If I can get that a little bit better here. 
little bit of bounce. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. What a glorious sounding engine. Wow. <laughs> this car is quick. Now, zero to 60 times, 4.4 seconds easily. Um, the 10 speed auto could probably shave about a half second off that time. Love the rev match function though. God, it just makes you like a pro driver when you start driving this thing and pushing it. Oh, oh, that sounds so good. Oh. Out of all the, the vehicles I've driven the past this past week for our best performance cars, I'd probably have to say the Mustang's one of the best sounding out of all of them. Maybe the Alpha comes very close, but it's an SUV and you just can't beat the sound of a glorious V8. Now, I will say that the McLaren also sounded great too, but there's just something about this because this car is the only manual transmission out of all the cars we're testing and that's what makes it so good. Now, driving down the road here, this car does have the Magno Rheolog Rheological dampers for like 2000 bucks. Um, so it does help with the ride quality. I'm gonna actually switch the drive mode here uh, into its normal setting, which by the way, I don't like how the drive modes force you to cycle through everything. I wish the toggle actually just pushed down so I could go you know, back and forth as opposed to toggling through everything. But once you put it into normal here, just kind of shift the gear and we'll go to higher gear. It's The Mustang still can be driven daily. That's the beauty about a vehicle like this is it's comfortable enough to where you can drive it daily. It stays relatively quiet, although this road here is very, very crappy. So it's hard to judge it for noise. But if you just get tired of the road noise, just start, you know, rev matching on the downshifts or letting it do that for you. And it sounds just absolutely insane. Now, visibility in this vehicle also could be better, um, but it is better than all the other muscle cars. The Camaro is probably the worst, but the Mustang just doesn't feel as playful and as focused um, as the Camaro. The Camaro just to me always feels like a more of a sports car. The Mustang's kind of in between the Challenger and the Camaro for feel. It has somewhat of that sports car feel because of the new independent rear suspension, but it's just not as good as the Camaros and its Alpha platform. God, this engine is just the most charismatic part. And I, I don't know if the bullet actually does sound louder than the standard GT. I mean, you can buy this performance exhaust on the standard GT, but there's just something about the bullet that definitely feels like they've tuned this differently. I mean, it, I mean obviously with the new induction uh, in, uh, manifold system with this vehicle from the Shelby, the engine revs up super quick. You wouldn't expect a muscle car to have, you know, this 7,500 RPM redline, but it redlines higher than what you get in the 6.2 and the Camaro and the 6.4 liter Challenger. The Mustang definitely has its, you know, its own charisma and it's all linked to this engine. So Ford's done a really good job with the V8. Handling could be improved. They could reduce the weight of this vehicle, make it a little bit more sharp and focused. But then some people may argue it's taking away from maybe even the character of a Mustang. But listen to that noise. Oh, I could do that all day long. I just leave it in third and just put my foot down and listen to the growl of this V8. What a great, great powertrain. The rest of the Mustang is a pleasant car. Um, but I guess for me with sports cars, sports cars, muscle cars, I prefer something a little bit more focused. Doesn't feel as big and heavy as this vehicle does, but the Mustang will get its own. Uh, when you start finding some back roads, the steering is really, relatively well weighted, relatively quick as well. So there is still plenty to like with this vehicle when you find a back road. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Smoked out the rear tires there. That was glorious. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yep. If I had a muscle car like this, I would probably just roast the rear tires all the time. It's so easy to do. And it was relatively controllable. The back stepped out, but you just kind of add some throttle, steer in the other into the direction of the turn, and this thing will like to wag its tail, but <laughs> I just, you know, for me, the styling of the bullet doesn't appeal to me because I never saw the movie bullet. So I don't like how this thing isn't really shouting the fact that it's a V8. Some of you may like that. They like the discreet factor of it. It's a sleeper. People just think it's an EcoBoost or a rental Mustang, but it, when you start it up and listen to it, that's when it'll remind you that it's not. Yes. 
So just like the standard Mustang EcoBoost and the Mustang GT, the new bullet trim definitely has the typical Mustang qualities. It has its own unique look to it, where I think Ford did a really good job at recapturing the heritage from the original 1968 Bullet. Although for my taste personally, I think it looks a little bit too discreet. Uh, I especially don't like the fact that the 5 low badge is not on the side, but it still drives like a traditional Mustang. It has really great noises. Love the GT performance package that comes standard on the Bullet. I like the dark Highland green color, um, and this is really probably what 85% of owners are going to be choosing anyways. And I also like the red painted brake calipers. For me, the Mustang still is not the sportiest to drive. That distinction belongs to the Camaro, although I haven't driven the 2019 Camaro just yet. The Mustang just feels a lot bigger. But uh, as you guys saw, its interior is still relatively comfortable. It has all the latest tech in it. And there's really a lot to like with the Mustang. But back to my original question, is the Bullet worthy of the Charge versus the standard GT? Now, if you guys look at the pricing of a Mustang, the base EcoBoost starts at $26,000, of course. That's for the four-cylinder turbo. If you guys want V8 power, you have to spend at least $35,000. And with the Bullet starting at $46,000, it looks like it has a $11,000 premium over a GT, which definitely isn't worth it. However, if you start looking at the option packages, the Bullet is based off of a GT premium, which starts at just under $40,000. But again, that still represents a $7,000 price hike. Um, looking closer at the option specs, Ford actually throws in several things. You have the $4,000 track performance package that's standard, that's optional on the GT. You have the performance exhaust for um, $900. Uh, you have the upgraded uh, interior uh, trimmings and whatnot. That's part of like a 401A upgrade package for $2,000. So when you throw that back in, it actually makes the bullet roughly only like a $500 price increase versus a GT where you kind of build it to be specced like this, which makes the bullet actually a good value considering you get an extra 20 horsepower out of this vehicle just for basically paying $500 extra. So if you guys are looking for the ultimate Mustang that's not a Shelby version, the bullet's certainly worth a look. Just be sure that you're okay with getting something that looks a little bit too discreet and you have to also be okay with the green or black exterior color. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Ford Mustang Bullet. If you're also looking to see guys cars I'm testing make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on Facebook and as always guys please keep subscribing to the redline reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews thank you so much for watching I'll catch you all in the next video styling differences the whole discrete factor are for me I like the shoutiness of the GT with the wing spoiler, but again, you bought the bullet because you wanted it to show your heritage to the movie and you want something that's a little bit more discreet. Trunk, sorry, I forgot about the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm sitting here like, okay. That's fine, just back up a little bit, back up a little bit, and now roll right into it.